One thing I love is getting questions from people about how things work, and in today's case, how things don't work. David asks, hey Ray, why is it when it's too hot, airplanes can't fly? This is actually a great question because it can get too hot to fly. If you think about hot air balloons, that may seem counterintuitive, but when temperatures get too hot, planes and other aircraft can start losing their ability to take flight. Just to calm your fears though, those temperatures are extremely high. Before we get to talking temperatures though, we need to talk about the big thing keeping planes on the ground, and that is gravity. As you can imagine, aircraft weighs a lot, so it takes a lot to get them off the ground and into the air. According to the Federal Aviation Administration, thrust, lift, drag, and weight are all big factors in getting heavy aircraft airborne. Air temperature, that is important too. But why does temperature matter? When warm air expands, this spreads out the air molecules contained within that air mass. As those molecules spread out, the air becomes less dense. Since the air's density drops, this causes the aircraft, relatively speaking, to react as if it's heavier or more dense than it would be at colder temperatures. This is called high density altitude. It's a condition of the atmosphere that reduces an aircraft's performance capabilities to those that the aircraft would experience at higher altitudes. Remember, the higher you go in the atmosphere, the thinner the atmosphere becomes. Exceptionally hot days can make the atmosphere thinner at lower altitudes. There are things though that pilots can do to reduce those impacts. Aircraft is tested for operations at different temperatures and altitudes, so pilots know these limitations before taking off. If it's too hot, you can reduce cargo to lighten the aircraft to help it perform better, and if it's way too hot, you might have to ground the plane. The opposite is also true. When it gets colder outside, planes controls can become more responsive, and pilots need to be aware of this as well. This is something we call low-density altitude. Reporting from home, I'm meteorologist Ray Petlin.